What are your thoughts on the death penalty? My thoughts? Yeah. Uh, been do you a, think about it much? Yeah, yeah. As a matter of fact, I actually do episodes uh, um, on my my show uh, about um, death penalty and about. But here's kind of the thing: um, um, when when someone it's announced that someone is going to is facing you know whatever it is. Uh, um, um, nitrogen deprivation which they're using now uh oh really yeah and they used it in uh in alabama recently well, a couple of times nitrogen deprivation mm -hmm. they yeah, put they, them in a room and suck or, they oh put they put, a, put a, it's like it looks like a firefighter's mask they put on their face wow yeah and is that because they never humane? can't get the damn formula right for lethal injection or people are always protesting about it it's not a very pleasant way to die and i know there's people say well it shouldn't be pleasant you know they did and you know you return, and then you know you've got these people that are using firing squad now, and um, I think they South, Car using, South, Car using that? South Carolina. I think they they tried it, and um, the guy eventually died. Uh, there were some shooters that missed the mark. I don't know how you can miss it, um, right? Because there's a patch. You're over pretty your close up. Yeah. Um, here's the thing about the death death penalty, um, and I've actually assisted in three um, three autopsies on people that were executed. So um, one was an electrocution and two were lethal injection. Why would you do an autopsy on somebody? Who because they're in state custody when they die. Let me ask you this. How do you classify the death? Is it an accident? That's a good question. No, it's not an accident. Is it a suicide? It's a, mur it's a murder. It's a homicide. It's yeah, a it's a homicide. It's done at the hand of the state. And it's a legal homicide. Yeah. I, I'm not a big fan of the term murder. Murder is a uh, lawyer's word. It's very dramatic. Mm. So homicide is very clinical, you know, and that's one of the five manners of death. And so they're in state custody. And as a matter of fact, autopsies on any prisoner, but particularly when it comes to executed individuals, are more detailed than anything you can possibly imagine. I'm talking about the soles of the feet are dissected. What? Palms of the hands, up and down the arms. The back is completely dissected out. Yeah. Yeah, everything stem to stern. Because what their their goal is, they want to, you want to be able to prove this person wasn't tortured in any way prior, mm. to, prior to the state killing them. It, it's, uh, it's an interesting thing. Um, uh, so, so, yeah. So, anyway, I... Who, who, who... who makes the call well, who dictates that that autopsies for these people who have um been executed by the state mm -hmm. who det who made the law or the rule that you have to do such an extensive deep dive on the autopsy i you know i don't know that they most states say that they have to be autopsy the extent of the autopsy i think traditionally has been dictated by the forensic pathology community okay. because they know where problems will arise it's like if you if you have someone that dies in the back of a cruiser, all right, and they're in custody, all right, um, there will be so much more detail given to that autopsy um, right. than any any other kind of case. And the same kind of dissection will generally be done on those individuals that die in police custody. Even if you have someone that dies in custody of, you know, an apparent cardiac event, there's mm -hmm. still going to be autopsy because, you know, you can't. You can't go back and wish that it had been done. All right. It right. it has to be done. If you don't do it at that moment in time, one, they're either going to be buried and vaulted down in the ground. So you're going to have to have them exhumed if mm -hmm. it comes, or they're going to be cremated. There won't be anything left at that point in time. So right. they're going to do it. They're gonna so do if it. somebody dies in the state's custody or in the government's custody. Yeah. You have to be absolutely sure there was no absolutely. foul play. Yeah. If there was no, yeah, you don't want there to be any question whatsoever. That's why, I'm like, so many offices will do things like um, partial autopsies, where they might only open the head or they might only open the chest. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I'm not a proponent of that. I've always felt like in for a penny, in for a pound. You got one foot in a boat and one foot in the water. Make up your mind. Either do the autopsy or don't do the autopsy with an external exam, mm -hmm. and they'll rationalize in a variety of ways. But if you're going to head, going to go ahead and put the cold steel to to a body, mm -hmm. you need you need to 
do it as thoroughly as you can because we've seen people cases where people have been uh, bitten by that. I, I covered, you know, the the Daybell cases up in Idaho, um, which you had two kids that were murdered. Um, one of the kids was um, there. I go use the word murdered. Um, hmm. Um, brutally murdered. I'll put it to you that way. Uh, one of the kids was cocooned and buried on a piece of farm farmland. Um, and cocooned. It, yeah, cocooned, like wrapped. They're wrapped in plastic. The body was. Yeah, and we view that as um, there's a certain way we view how people, how perpetrators treat bodies after death. Like cocooning of a body, burying a body, that's memorialization of a body. That means that you have kind of a tie. Even the most brutal murder, they're trying to, in their own way, first off, they might be trying to hide the body, obviously, but they're honoring the body. Whereas this kid's sister was within 50 yards, and they used a pickaxe to break her body apart as she's been thrown onto a fire and try to render her down. Oof. Well, the same guy that did this is now on death row um, in Idaho, for killing his wife as well. And they went out to the scene when she died. She had a frothy cone. She had a frothy cone that was coming out of her mouth, which means she was in some kind of congestive failure. You see it a lot with drug drug ingestion. And they were like, yeah, we're not going to do an autopsy. Well, it turns out that was homicide. Wow. And they transported her from Idaho to Utah where she was – uh, buried there and you had to get the Utah State Medical Examiner involved in this thing and her grave was also compromised so there had been some water I think water intrusion and mm. that sort of thing and she had already been embalmed um, so the, my point of my rambling here is the fact that you need to go ahead and do it if you're right. going to do it do it um, you don't want to dilly dally around with this because you get, that's the thing, you know, death is final in many ways. It's final because it ends somebody's life, but it's also final in sense from an investigative perspective that if you do not strike while the iron is hot, you're going to find yourself wedged into a horrible position right. down the road. If somebody comes forward and says, yeah, well, you know, um, they may have died at somebody else's hand or they may have died in a, in a manner in which it's not consistent with the story we were initially yeah. given. The crazy thing is so many people get exonerated off death row from new evidence. I know. And DNA that's, evidence. Yeah. And again, that's with the, the only thing that yeah. I would say. Is well, the with the technology that we have now, um, I, I am not as inclined as I once was uh, towards it because there have been screw ups in the past where, we know for a fact that people have been executed that were not responsible. Right. And it's – you can dismiss that if you want to. I don't mean you. I mean like right. universally. Mm -hmm. You can dismiss that if you want to. However, uh, you can't reclaim that life. You can't bring it back. And I've actually heard people make the argument. They'll say, well, uh, I'm sure they were guilty of something. Really? That rose to – rose to the to the death penalty that you're going to kill them so i think that it is warranted it is warranted but it has to be very specific and buddy it better be very very thorough the investigation do you think it helps victim families of victims when the the guy who committed the crime gets executed um i have never well um do you think it like psychologically closes they'll, any they'll doors say, or they'll say well we can close that chapter but they're always left wanting and here's the other thing if you try to make the argument for deterrence that argument is facile it's doesn't exist you you can't there there's no deterrent you know that you can connect it's, oh gee whiz i you know that guy got executed he's oh, been I, on I death better row not do this I could for get 25 killed. years right. later so how does it act as a deterrent? I always cite, uh, I was just having this discussion the other day with somebody. There's this, I urge anybody to look this image up because it's a classic image. It's uh, from the Old West. Everybody's dressed in black, you know, black broad cloth, cloth, you know, jackets and all that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And 
it's a huge crowd that's in the center of this town and there's gallows there and you can see fathers in the image they're i guess they're fathers they're grown men and they have the kids up on their shoulders and they're facing the gallows you don't see the accused on the i don't think you see the accused on the gallows but people would bring their kids to these things and in our mind you know it's like <gasps> clutch pearls you know that's horrible right. but i don't know it for a fact i can actually probably say that the dad was saying boy let me tell you something if you do this cause and effect this is where you're going to wind up right um and or just the average citizenry you know and yeah i guess it's a i guess it's a blood sport you know you mm. you know people want the gore of it you know kind of like uh um you know the terror in france where everybody show up for the guillotining of of everyone right. um it wasn't necessarily well i guess you could drive people with fear that you know this can happen to you but in to my way of thinking none of these executions have ever you know in in modern times have never been done so that the public can see it and right. again it's like it's like anything else with death most people don't realize the reality of death until it happens in their little space yeah they they don't think it's going to visit them 